Hello, my name is Tracy Allen and I want to welcome you to Cooking with Some Friends. Hello, welcome to Cooking with Some Friends. Brian, one of my sons, is here, and you've seen Brian on other videos. He's here, and we're doing the carnival foods, and we've got corn dogs and funnel cakes and all those things that we've already done, but now we're gonna do some churros, and so he has a pan on the stove, and he's gonna put some things in there, um, but I'm gonna change the angle of the camera first. Okay. Okay. Okay, so in his pan, and you set a medium to medium high. Hi, Josh, you're in this one too. Um, oh, it's of course Josh, there he is. Snuck up oh. on me. Uh, Brian's going to put in his pan a about half a, a cup. About a cup and a quarter, it looks like, of milk. What? That's what's in there. No, it isn't. It's a quarter of a cup. Oh, it is a quarter of a cup. I thought <laughs> I, I said gonna it. say, what? <laughs> okay, he's gonna put a quarter. I can't read or, Actually, it's a half a cup of milk. Um, he's gonna put a half a cup of water, which Taylor measured for us already. And eight tablespoons of butter, which is one stick. Okay, back up, dude. And then a teaspoon of sugar and a quarter teaspoon of salt, and that's all measured together. Okay. Yep. So we wanna put this on the heat and we wanna bring this to a boil. So we'll come back once this is boiling. Okay, so Brian has our milk combination almost to a boil. So I'll yeah, let you see that real quick. Um, and then when he gets that to a boil, he's gonna remove that from the heat and he's gonna stir in the flour. And we have a cup of flour that's ready for yeah. him. Just trying to stir it pretty regularly so the milk doesn't scorch. Right. That would be gross. That would be disgusting. Okay. Think a rolling boil, or you think that's good? I think you're good. Okay. Okay, so he's going to take the pan off the heat and leave the heat on, though, because we're going to put it back here in a minute. And he's going to stir the flour in all at once. Um, it's very similar to making cream puffs, because you do the same thing with cream puffs. I have never made a cream puff. Well, we're going to do that on a video eventually, but... In fact, I think I have it set up for September or October. Okay, so stir that in and it'll get really thick. As soon as he gets it stirred in, he's gonna take it back to the heat and keep cooking it. And it'll take about two minutes to get that. You don't want that flour taste in it. Right. Um, it does so, look like a really big roux. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back on the heat for two minutes. Okay, so Brian removed the churro dough from the stove after it cooked for a couple of minutes and put it in a mixing bowl. Now he's gonna use an electric mixer and he's gonna add the eggs one at a time and make sure you beat them completely. Do you want me to mix this for a minute first? Uh, yeah, he's gonna beat that, sorry, I'm glad you said that. For just two minutes to help it cool so it doesn't cook the eggs. So we don't scramble the eggs. So our dough, this does make a really thick Very um, dough. How do you say that? C-H-O-U-X, is that how you spell it? That's the type of dough. A shoe? Shoe. Yeah, that it makes, it, which is a really thick pastry dough. Okay, so in our cup that we used earlier for funnel cakes, we have a pastry bag that has a star tip on the end of it. And Brian's going to load this up with the batter. Attempt to get this out of here. Yes. Without making too big of a mess. So it's very And then we're going to take it over to the oil and pipe it into the oil and cut in between to make different separate churros. Okay, we're over to the oil and Brian is going to pipe the dough. As soon as I get it back. Yes, into the hot oil. And then, and he's gonna do it in about six inch strips. And then he's using a pair of kitchen shears to cut that off. Okay. 
And he's gonna repeat this process and get, oh, as many as he can in there, just don't overcrowd too much. Once they brown, we will roll them in a combination of cinnamon sugar and then they're ready to eat. And they puff up quite a bit, don't they? Yeah, they cook very fast. Yeah, you want to make sure that you go ahead and dip them in the cinnamon sugar while they're still a little warm so they'll go ahead and hold the cinnamon sugar. Hey everyone and welcome to Cooking with Some Friends. We're continuing with our carnival type foods and one of the things that I decided sounded kind of fun and that's a carnival type food, we're gonna do some fried Oreos. So my grandkids are gonna come over this evening and help us um, eat those up. But I'm gonna make the raspberry sauce that you can dip these in um, first. And I have four cups of raspberries and I would have preferred to have black raspberries, but our store doesn't carry them in the freezer section. So I am doing red raspberries, but I have four cups of unsweetened raspberries in my pan. And I'm gonna cook those for five to 10 minutes until they start breaking down before I go ahead and add sugar and things, um, the other items to these. So I have them on about a medium heat. And like I said, they're gonna have to start breaking down some, which um, it really won't take very long because out of the freezer, they have kind of start that anyway. Um, but the other ingredients that go in it, there's some sugar, there's some raspberry jam. And if you can find seedless, it's a little bit better since of the seeds of the raspberries. Um, but I specifically looked for um, Bon Maman um, jam, which uh, is a French, it's, it started with a French family. And the rumor is that this French family um, helped during the war shelter Jewish families that were being sought out. And um, they really haven't found a whole lot of factual information on that, but I don't know that, just like in articles that I've read, I don't know that it really matters. Just to remember what happened and to know that there were brave families and people out there that helped in, in that whole Holocaust um, and that people, most people are inherently good. So that's what I sought out. I sought out this jam. So that's what I'm using. It has cornstarch and cold water in it. And that's all of the ingredients that go in this raspberry sauce. Um, I have my Oreos out and you do a mix with some pancake batter and some milk and oil and vanilla um, and you deep fat fry those and um, dip them in powdered sugar and then they're ready for the raspberry sauce that we're making now. So I will come back once these raspberries have started to break down. Okay, as you can see, my raspberries have been cooking and they've broken down nicely. And um, so now I'm ready to go ahead and add that jam. And the Bon Maman uh, translated means good mama. And so um, I thought that was interesting as well. And um, if you're interested in the story, you can find it online and it's just a sweet story. And like I said, though, if it um, isn't true, then at least it gives us a little bit of background to actually go and look up some of the history. I also am going to add my sugar and I have um, in my bowl, I have a, a three fourths cup of sugar. So I'm gonna put these together Mix them in and let this on a medium heat, let this come to a simmer. And as you can see, this is gonna make quite a bit of raspberry sauce, um, not just for our Oreos, but our deep fried Oreos, but if you like um, Monte Cristos, similar to what you would get at Cheddar's, you could actually use this sauce for your dipping sauce for those as well. Um, the sauces are very similar. I just want that to come to a simmer. Once this comes to a simmer, I'm going to add a combination of some cold water, about a quarter cup of cold water, and two tablespoons of cornstarch. I'm gonna whisk those together in that cup, and then I'm gonna add them to this raspberry mixture as a thickener. Um, and
And then um, all I have to do at that point, after I stir that in, um, is to let this cool and it's done. So I'm just waiting for that simmer to happen. And my jam wasn't cold since it was a brand new jar of that. So that will help actually with that, it not taking as long to come up to that simmer. And you don't want to get it too hot or turn your burner up too high because then as it starts to simmer, it will actually bubble up and that sugar would burn you. Well, I'm going to get my quarter cup of cold water. starch and I'm going to whisk those together. Not quite to a simmer yet. It smells so good as well. I love the smell of the fresh fruit. Um, I'm not sure uh, if there's any other carnival foods that, that just remind you of that time of year. If you have a special fair or carnival in your community, your county, um, even going to a state fair, uh, some of the, the foods that remind you of that whole carnival atmosphere. Um, we have a lot of local people that we even have um, a lady who does... Uh, Hispanic foods like enchiladas and that, that she's always at our county fair. Um, we have uh, usually a, a concessionaire who does the spiral potatoes. Um, we have the, our local Lions Club does a French fry um, shack. So there's, just lots of things and smells and um, the snow cones, obviously, but um, that's one of those I'm not going to do, snow cones or cotton candy. Um, but they're both very good carnival foods. Um, lots, lots of sugar, uh, lots of um, fat or deep fried foods just give you that whole carnival atmosphere. Um, as this starts to that stage of simmering, it's already starting to thicken up some on its own. Um, so that thickener that we're gonna add will just help with that. Sometimes when you buy those packaged seeds or raspberries too, you'll find that they've missed a seed or, or a, excuse me, a stem or um, some of those things. But that's easy to do with raspberries because they're not the easiest fruit to clean and get all the stems and leaves. Okay, we're almost there. I've really enjoyed the carnival foods, uh, making those. It's, they're not the way I cook all the time, but they are fun foods to make. I'm looking forward to some of the fall foods. I just love coming up. We'll do some soups and pumpkin recipes and those things that just make you think of cozying in in the fall weather. And um, so we're gonna get past this whole carnival weather and then we'll switch to fall type things. Um, and then we'll come my favorite. Uh, Christmas time is my favorite. So we'll have that just around the corner. It'll be here before we know it. Okay, we've got a simmer going on and you can see it's thickened up quite a bit. So now I'm gonna give this a quick stir again, my thickener, my cornstarch and cold water, and I'm gonna stir this into my raspberry sauce and then this will just be ready to set aside until we're ready with our fried Oreos. And it's just like most things when it you use that cornstarch thickener. Um, it feels like it's not gonna do it, and then all of a sudden, there it is. 
so it's really gotten to a thick texture and I'm ready to set this off the heat and wait till I'm done with my Oreos. We're doing the fried Oreos for our carnival foods and um, I'm making the batter first for those. I've already made our raspberry sauce that we're going to dip these in, but I wanna make the batter for now and we're waiting for oil to heat up to 350. So um, in the batter we have some plain pancake mix and I have to also add to that one egg three-fourths cup of whole milk and two teaspoons of oil. I'm also gonna put in that just a little bit of vanilla. So I'm gonna mix that gently and it will be ready as soon as our oil is hot. Then all we'll have to do is dip the Oreos in this batter and fry them at 350 until golden brown. Then I'll turn that and let the other side brown and drain it on paper toweling and then dip it in powdered sugar. And then they'll be ready for our raspberry sauce. Okay, our oil is just about there, so we're gonna start dipping. Coat our Oreo in the batter. And release it into the oil. And you can fry one or two of these at a time, depending on how big your pan is. You could get up to four or five in there, but my pan's not very big. It doesn't take them very long to fry up. There's one of them. Ready. And we'll just keep going until we're done. I will show you a picture of our fried Oreos when we've got them all done. Thanks for joining us for this session of Cooking with Some Friends. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And find us on Facebook at Cooking with Some Friends.